Now we're back to learning to code and this is the fifth walkthrough in my free code camp playlist and it's the first certification project. It's the survey form under responsive web development and it basically repeats what we've already learned in the first courses but this time you'll have to create it on your own so you're not given the training wheels anymore. But up here you can see the story, it has 16 bullet points basically and they walk you through it step by step even though it's not a step by step course anymore. In this walkthrough I'm going to show you how to pass it, how you style it and what you do additionally is up to you. You can see for example I can directly write in the H1. But it's a good idea to treat the project as a real website. So I'm going to start with the typical doc type HTML and give it this website structure even though it's not necessary. So what we need is the doc type, the HTML, a head and a body. In our head we can directly add a little bit of meta information and a title. Let me just call it, I don't know, registration form project or something like this. And then the body, I'll add the first bullet point. So we need an H1 element. I give it the same name as our title. Meta information, let me add the char set, UDF minus 8. And we can also link it to our CSS directly. We need a relationship of starsheet. And our href is given. Let me check it. It should be, there it is. So it's styles.css. And on top we've got it. So if you click on the styles.css you've got the CSS file and let me target the H1 to see if it works. I'll make it text align center and it does work. So we've linked it correctly. Let me close the styles for now. We'll work on the HTML part for the most part of this walkthrough. Now let's go over the bullet points one by one. We need to add an ID of title to our H1. So have this one. Alright, that should be good. We can move on to step two. We need a paragraph. Oh, let me just write a short explanation. To pass this course, you can write something in it. But it's a good idea to treat this as an extra form that you would create. That way you learn a little bit more while doing it. And it's also supposed to have an ID in this case of description. So let me add that in the opening tag. We can move on now to step three. We need a form after our paragraph and it should be given an ID of survey form. Let's move on. Now we're going to add our first input fields and it's supposed to be nested by our form. I like to use labels. It's not a must that we should use it, so it's not part of our user story here in this course. But we've done that in the first, I believe it's the third and the fourth walkthrough on Free Code Camp in a responsive web design development curriculum. So why not use it here as well? The input is supposed to be required, so add that as an attribute. And it needs to have an ID of name 
and a type of text. By default, the type is text, but it specifically mentioned that we should add it. So don't forget it. We can copy and paste this for step five. All that we have to change now is set name to email. The type is also email. Any ID, we can make it email as well. It's still required, so keep that attribute. Now we can go to step six. We've already done that by changing the type to email. So we would get a validation error if we don't add an add sign, for example. Well, let me first connect the labels to our input fields and I use the for attribute for that. For step seven, we are supposed to use a number. Should have the type of number. Well, let me change the ID to number. We are supposed to give that a specific value. And let me change that to maybe your age or something. Okay, step eight is fine as well. And we'll use minimum and max attributes in step nine. Let me just give it some values. Let's say 16 for minimum. And maximum. I don't know, like 90, 95, 98, whatever. The values don't really matter. It's important that we have these attributes with a value. Let me just leave the required attribute in it. We can move on to step 10. And we will add some information to our labels. So we were actually supposed to add labels to these input fields. So I was right in doing that by default. And we'll add an ID attribute to each. With name label, email label, and number label. And that should be it for step 10. Step 11, we need a placeholder attribute. Add it to the input field. Maybe right here after the type and give it some value. I don't know, please enter your name, please enter your email, something like this. I can just copy paste it for the other two input fields. So we're good with this one. Let's check number 12. This time we need a select tag. An ID of dropdown should be added. And in it we need options. It should have at least two options to choose from. So let us make it, I don't know, about gender or something. Let me just make it male, female, whatever. 
as I've said, the text and the values that you add here, they aren't that important to pass this course. The drop down works. Don't just write text after the select, it needs to come before it. So let me nest it in a label. I need to close the label after the select. The next step, we need radio buttons. Again, we'll start with labels and add the input field. And this time it needs to be type radio. We need two of them, so let me copy paste this. Then if we go to type radio, we can see our radio buttons. It should have the same name so that both radio buttons are connected. I don't know what could I use. Maybe just something with cars, I don't know. Let's choose your car, I'll just call it like that. Let me make it Mercedes and Ferrari so that we have two cars and we can use that as a name. So Mercedes minus Ferrari for both and now they're connected. You can see when I check one, the other is unchecked automatically. And that should be it for step 13. Number 14, we now need checkboxes. Keep in mind that we are still in our form. So everything that we write here is nested in our form. And I can just copy paste this one. And then I change the type to checkbox. I get rid of the name. Um, what can I use here? Let me just make it choose your or choose the countries that you like, whatever. As I've said, the actual text, it doesn't really matter for passing this course. Well, let me make like three or four checkboxes. I can just copy paste this. Or maybe it looks a little bit too chaotic. So let me directly go to the styles.css and I change the label display to block. So that we don't get lost on the right hand side. And it looks way better. And maybe I reposition the text here and there a little bit. Let me check it. I go to the HTML. First four ones are looking good. Maybe I'll do something about the two radio buttons and the checkbox. Let me put that outside of the label. How many checkboxes do I need? It just says a series of checkboxes. 
So I don't know. Let me just make it three. Germany, USA, Canada. We we'll need to add a value to it. It says so in step 14. Make the value the country name. So we're good with this one. All right, let me get back right here to radio buttons and I put the text before the label as well. And I think that looks better. Now we can move on to the next step. We now need a text area element. Let me just make it about feedback so that the user can type in some feedback in text form. So opening and closing tag for the text area. We can nest it in the label once more. And that should be fine. Final step, we need a submit button. Well, let me connect the label with our text area. I give it a four, call it feedback, and I'll have to have a name for the text area so that this is also connected. The final one, as I've said, we need a submit button. We can use inputs or a button for that. Let me just stick to input. So I need the label first. Type submit for the input. On value, I'll make it submit so that it's English. And that should basically be everything that we need. I said we can now style it, but let me first go over all of these points below. I will check if we got it. Here's our P element, and we need an ID of description. We've got that as well. Let's move on to the form element with an ID of server form. We've got that. Should have an input element with an ID of name. Where is it? Here it is. Type of text, we've got that right next to it. Should require an input, we've got that. And it should be a descendant of the survey form, we've got it nested. So that's okay. Input element with ID email. And type email, and it is also required, we've got that. What else? Should be nested in the form. We've got it. Input field with ID of number. Once again, inside of the survey form, we have that. Should have a type of number. We've got that once more. Now 
min and max attributes. We've added that. So this should pass as well. Name label for the ID. Got that up here. An email label and number label as well. But these are our three labels that we've created first. We've got these following three points as well. They're all descendants of the survey form. This is correct. We need a placeholder for each. We've got that done. We need a select field with an ID of dropdown. We've got that right here. Should have at least two selectable option elements. We've made it three. Oh, we can select them. That's fine. Once again, it's nested inside the survey. And the radio buttons, we've got two. It's for the cars. And they're also nested inside of the survey. Should have a value attribute. Have we done that? Let me check it. No, we haven't. So let me add that. So first radio button, I give it a value of Mercedes, the second one Ferrari. Now that should pass as well. All radio buttons should have a name attribute and value. We've got that. Next one should also pass. To input fields with type checkbox, we've made it three. And they're both nested in the survey form. They have a value. We've added that. Well, let us check the text area. It's also nested in the form. And we should have a submit button created via input or button. It should have the type of submit. We're good. So let me just run the test. It looks like I still missed something. What is it? It's the submit button. What have I missed? Oh, there you go. I haven't given it an ID of submit. But the rest should be fine. So let me run it again. All right, and we're good. So this is what you have to do to pass it. As I said, treat it as your own project. For example, go to the styles.css and style it a little bit. Just to give you a little bit of inspiration, it will make sense to select the body, change, for example, the font family. Let me make it a bit bigger. I'll give it a different background color and a different color.
and maybe add increased margin for our labels. But this is all optional. It's important that you've got the HTML part right, and then you can pass this and move on. So once again, do it yourself. Use my video as a walkthrough that helps you when you get stuck. And I hope in general that this video was helpful and helps you in completing this first part of the Responsive Web Design course on FreeCodeCamp. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.